All right, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can connect high level with Thrive Apprentice. I'm going to show you the easiest and probably the most widely applicable and best way that you can do this to integrate the two tools together, as well as loop in other things in your tech stack if you so desire. And I'm going to show you how to do it both ways from Thrive Apprentice or the Thrive ecosystem over to high level, and then from the high level ecosystem over to Thrive Apprentice. So that if you sold a course with whatever tool and you wanted to add people over to high level, I'll show you how to do that. Or if you got people into your CRM or you got people or contacts into high level, maybe through like a consulting or coaching funnel, how you can then give those people access to a Thrive Apprentice course or content over in Thrive Apprentice. So let's dive in and take a look at how to do that. Let's go ahead and start on the Thrive Apprentice side. So if someone gets access to our Thrive Apprentice courses, whether through uh, selling them with something like Thrive Cart or SureCart or something like that, the bottom line is they get access to our Thrive Apprentice products, we're going to use Thrive Automator. And this is going to let us send our data over to high level. So inside of Thrive Automator, we're going to add a new automation here. And we're going to, let's just give it a name. We'll call this um, Apprentice to high level. We're going to have the trigger be Apprentice, Thrive Apprentice, and we're going to have it be that a user gets access to a product. So we could scroll down and select user receives access to a product. If you're not familiar with Thrive Apprentice courses and content, whether it be in a Thrive Apprentice course itself or on a page on your website that's protected in a product, maybe for something like a membership, all of those reside within a product. So when a user receives access to a product, whether you gave it to them manually or for free, they'll be pushed along inside this automation. Alternatively, if you have watched other videos on my channel with Thrive Automator and Thrive Apprentice, you could have something more along the lines of something that looks like this. So let's change over to like Surecart, for example, and we'll say that someone purchases a product. So we'll choose our product. And let's say that on my site, for example, somebody bought my, uh, let's just say one of my courses here. So let's say my Thrive Apprentice to Master course. So if someone purchased that product through Surecart, I could also proceed with this automation. So we'll just go ahead and proceed with this one. It's going to be essentially the same either way, whether they were given access to a product manually or whether they purchased it through Surecart or Thrivecart and got access. The next step is the same. We're going to choose to send a webhook. Webhooks are just a fancy way of integrating things together. I have lots of videos here on my channel all about them and they all function fairly similar. So the basics of a webhook are that you need a webhook URL. This is where you're going to send your data. So to get that, we need to now go over to high level to set up how we're going to receive this data and then what we're going to do with it. So we're going to leave this tab open and we're going to open up another tab. We're going to open up high level. Here in my white labeled version of high level here, I'm just going to go to automation on the left hand side and then I'm going to create a new automation. We can start from scratch or you can, if you already have a particular automation template, it's very easy to add this step inside of it. One of the things I really like about High Level is just how powerful their automation workflow engine is. There's so much you can do with it. But in this case, it's actually really straightforward. So we're just gonna add a new trigger and we're going to look for webhook. We're going to choose inbound webhook and we're going to give our webhook a name if we desire. I could say something like purchased Thrive Apprentice course. And then I'm going to copy this webhook URL. I'm going to go back over to Thrive Automator and I'm going to paste in that URL into my webhook URL field. And for the request format, let's go ahead and change that to JSON, the J-S-O-N option there. Now for our fields, this is the data that we're sending over. So we do need to expand this out and we need to send over a key and a value pair. This is basically like saying what data is being sent over. Let's give it like a an identifier like first name and the value would be the actual first name of our customer. Now, depending on how deeply integrated you want this to be with high level, you can send over simple things like first name, which we'll do no matter what. So we'll just say first name and our value there will be our insert dynamic data. We will go to our registered user and we will choose their first name. Then we'll add another key. Let's add their last name too, just in case we pick that up. We'll go back here. We'll go back to registered user. We'll select their last name. Let's add another field. We definitely want their email. So we'll give that a label as email. And our value here will be registered user, user email. And we can stop there. However, if inside of high level, you had 
tons of custom fields. You were using that CRM for robust reasons like populating what products people purchased and you had a really kind of fleshed out custom field section of your contact profile, you could continue to add fields to send over more data, whether it be dynamic or static. But for our sake, we're just simply wanting to say if the person purchased the product, got access to the product, let's just send over who they are so that we can start tagging them and doing things in high level. Now here's the next step. We need to click test connection. So let's click that right there and it should come back and say that it was sent successfully. Now we'll come over here to high level or come back to high level and we'll click fetch sample requests. And now we're going to select the payload that we received. You'll see that we did receive a payload, our first name, last name, and email fields that we created. There they are right there. So we'll go ahead and save our trigger. Now by default, when we saved our trigger, we were automatically given this next step in our workflow called create or update our contact. When we select that, we can add a field and we can start to populate the fields that we know that we sent over. So we know that we sent over the first name. Now we need to assign the value for that first name. So there's this little tag over here on the right side. That's where we can select our custom values. And we're going to choose inbound webhook trigger. And that's going to have the data that we sent over. And so we're going to select first name. We're going to add another field and repeat this process now for last name, choosing custom values, selecting last name, and then we'll end with our email field. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll select custom values, inbound webhook trigger, and email. And we would continue adding fields for all of the data that we sent over, whether it be dynamic data that we pulled in from the purchase or when we added the user, or if it's data that is static and we sent over a defined static value in our key and value pairs. For our example here, we are done. We've added all of the info that we added inside of our webhook. So I'm going to save this action. And now we get to determine what happens next. We've got our data, we created our contact. Now we could tag the contact. So we could add a contact tag. If we'd already created a tag, we could click select a tag and choose it from our drop down list. Or if we don't have a tag yet that matches this workflow and we're creating it ourselves, maybe we're migrating over to high level from another tool, we would want to create a tag and we can do that right here. So for me, this is a course. So I could start by saying course, drive apprentice to master. And then I could click add tag. And now I have a tag being applied to the user if I click save action so that when the data comes into high level, it creates or updates a contact and then it tags them as having purchased my course, Thrive Apprentice to Master. Since I'm already in this workflow and high level automations or workflows can send emails, maybe I should send my onboarding email for my Thrive Apprentice to Master course. So I could click this plus symbol right here and I could scroll down. It's right here actually to send email. And now we can use this WYSIWYG email builder here like you would just about in any email builder. I'll have other videos about this on my channel. If I don't have them, they're coming soon. And if I do have them, you'll find them in my high level playlist where I go over how to set up your email inside of high level. But for me, I tend to leave these blank here from name and from email so that they default to my default that I've already set up. So that's a look at how we go from Thrive Apprentice over to high level to start using some of the really great features inside of high levels workflows. Now, what if we wanted to go the other direction? Maybe someone booked a coaching call with us and we have a coaching call automation. And as part of that coaching call, we want to automatically give them access to a course or whatever it is that they got access to in high level. However, we got that contact info. We want to automate the process of sending that data over to Thrive Apprentice. So let's look at how to do that. I'm going to use an example that I have here of my appointment reminder and confirmation workflow where a user has purchased and booked a call with me inside of high level, it's called appointments. So I have booked my appointment and I've got this automation going that I've built out. So let's say that at the end of this coaching call that we have, we're going to automatically grant this user access to a course. So to do that, I'm going to click that plus and I'm going to search for webhook. And I'm going to choose the webhook option here that just says webhook. This should start to look familiar, except we're doing it the other way. So let's go back over to Thrive Apprentice. Let's come back here. Let's go ahead and abandon that one. Let's add a new automation and we can give this one a name and say that this is, you know, high level two. And we can say that's like high level to our Thrive Apprentice course. So we'll choose incoming webhook. And here it is, here's our URL. This time it was given to us by Thrive Automator and we'll paste in our URL there. 
our method is post. That's fine. High level will automatically send it as JSON, which is totally fine for Thrive to pick up on. And now we'll want to send over some custom data. So let's go ahead and add in at least two or three items just going the other direction. So first name, just go ahead and put them all here, last name and email. And let's go ahead and select our values again. So our values this time will be the other direction. It'll be our contact first name, our contact last name. And again, clicking that little custom values option, it'll be our contacts email. And again, it could go the other way as well. We could put as much information that we want in here and send it back the other way. Now, a little bit different this time, there's no ability for us to send this test data over to Thrive Automator. So instead of clicking listen, we're just gonna add our three fields that we know we created, which are first name, last name, and email. We want these keys to match. So whatever we put here, first name, last name, and email, we need to put exactly the same way inside of Thrive Automator. Now this incoming data here is just going to be mapped into what type of data it is. So a first name is just text and the last name is just text, but the email is dynamic mapping as email. It's just a nuance to how Thrive Automator works. So again, text for both of these under generic data, but the email needs to be dynamic mapping email. Now we can click done. And we have to determine what happens when this webhook comes in. And the thing that you need to do first is click WordPress and find or create user because we have to match the data that we just received with a user in our WordPress site. And here we go, first name, last name, and it automatically brings over that email. So let's go ahead and enter in our webhook data. So we click these three little stacked circles, choose first name, webhook data, last name. And I would leave the user role alone unless you know you had a reason to change it. And if you sent over additional information in our webhook over here in high level, you would just repeat that process right here by adding in the keys and the values of how you want to slot those into your WordPress user. This is highly unlikely that you would use these fields in this direction. So I'd leave this alone. And then you click done. And then from here, the next step would be once it finds or creates the user based on their email address, that's the unique identifier. We want to add another action and that one is going to be apprentice because we are going to grant access to a product. And in this case, it's going to be our Thrive Apprentice to Master Course. And then we'll click done. And that's it. You've sent your data from high level over to Thrive Automator and Thrive Apprentice. Very simple on this side. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do in this connection between Thrive Apprentice and high level to make these two tools work really well together in either direction. So if you're interested in high level, I do have a link down below where you can learn more about picking it up. And as always, Thrive Apprentice and other great tools that work with it.